This is Ask Todd on the Financial Exchange Radio Network. If you have an existing estate plan or are in the market for one, Todd Lutzke is here to answer your questions and help you plan for a later life. Ask Todd is presented by Cushing & Dolan, serving Massachusetts and New England for more than 35 years, helping families with estate and tax planning, Medicaid planning, and probate law. Visit CushingDolan.com. Now, here's Todd Lutzke. As promised, we're now joined by Todd Lutzke from the law firm of Cushing and Dolan for Ask Todd. It's your chance to ask Todd your questions about your estate plan live on air right now. Phone number here for the studio is 888-205-2263. That number again is 888-205-2263. So get calling if you got a question about your estate plan or your lack of an estate plan, maybe you want to ask Todd about that. That phone number again is 888-205-2263. And we've got the phone lines open, so get dialing again at 888-205-2263. Mr. Lutsky, how are you? I'm never better than you. I'm doing okay. Yeah, just okay? Well, I uh, I had a second job as a human cannonball. You did? I did. How'd that go? Got fired. Well, well, that's true. That's yeah. what happens. Yeah, it's yeah. a problem. Todd, let's talk a little bit about a basic will. What percentage of families do you think can get by with just using a will for their estate plan? You know, that's just it's such a common question and, and a good one. I mean, at the end of the day, uh, people think that. They'll come into the office and they'll say, I pretty much have an estate. No, they don't say I have an estate plan. They say, I want an estate plan. Or they'll say, I need a will because that's my estate plan. They think the will is their entire estate plan. Mm-hmm. That, that's usually what I hear. And and again, uh, the, you know, the new guide is about potholes. This is certainly a pothole to avoid in the estate planning world. Why? Let me let me start off by saying, you know, a will is a won't. I, I know it sounds funny, but a, a, a will. It does sound funny. Yeah, a will won't avoid probate. And you think it does, but it doesn't. It's the only estate planning document that goes to the probate court. Uh, a will will not reduce your estate tax liability. So uh, that's a problem because mostly we want to do that. So it won't avoid probate, won't reduce estate taxes, and won't protect assets from the nursing home because it just doesn't. So, folks, three major things that most people want to accomplish when they do an estate plan, the will won't accomplish. Now, having said that, if you're going to do no other planning... I'm going to say at least do a will. At least it's going to direct where your assets go when you pass so that your wishes will be accomplished in terms of how your family gets it. Because if you don't at least do that, you are going to be thrown into this thing called the intestate succession statute. That doesn't sound fun. The heck is that, right? That is the government. Each state has their own statute that tells us where your assets go if you don't and it's not where you think it might go it's like a big plinko board where the ball falls down and says okay if you died and you left kids and a spouse look here if you left no kids and just a spouse look here if you don't have either of those then go look over here and it works its way down the line into the next closest next of kin which is not how it always how you always think it might be Talking with Todd Lutsky from the law firm of Cushing and Dolan. If you've got a question that you'd like to ask him about your estate plan, the studio line here is 888-205-2263. That is the number to call to ask Todd your question right now live on air. Again, 888-205-2263. Todd, how often should a family review an estate plan that they've already made? Great question. Another thing that comes up, right? Uh, There is no hard and fast rule, but I think at a bare minimum, you know, if I've done it between 10 and 15 years ago, I think you need to dust it off, right? Mm. It depends how old you were when you did it. I get it. And that's always important. Couple this timetable I'm giving you with age and it matters because if I did this when I was 50 and I'm now 65, I I probably did a revocable trust. I I'm 65 now and I need to revisit what my asset limits are, what my assets have grown to or failed to grow to, and then figure out whether or not I'm concerned about nursing homes, which I might not have been when I did my planning 
initially. Mm. So that's just one reason to review your estate plan. And, and, and quite frankly, that's a big pothole to avoid. Don't just do your plan and forget about it. You know, you say set it and forget it. That's not always the way to go. Talking with Todd Lutsky from the law firm of Cushing and Dolan. Again, the studio line here, if you've got a question for Todd, is 888-205-2263. We're going to take a quick break, but when we come back, it's right to your calls with Todd Lutsky. 888-205-2263. Your calls when we return. Ask Todd with Todd Lutsky every Wednesday at 1030. Only here on the Financial Exchange Radio Network. You're listening to Ask Todd with Todd Lutsky on the Financial Exchange Radio Network. As promised, let's get right to your calls with Todd Lutsky. First up, we've got Marianne in Spencer. Marianne, what's your question for Todd? Hi, Todd. Hello. Hi, thank you for all your wonderful information. You're welcome. I have five accounts. And um, you mentioned one, which one you should use to pay your, your monthly bills. Mm-hmm. I have Social Security, a pension plan, a 401k, IRA, and savings account. Which account should I take money out to pay my monthly bills? Well, I, I assume all these accounts that you're mentioning are, are in your own name, are they? Yes. So I, I would just say that your, your whatever your savings and checking account is that, that you have where you get your direct deposit, Social Security check and, and pension check, et cetera, into, I mean, it would seem to me that that would make the most sense just to use that money to pay your bills regularly. And then as you need additional money to live on, I would always spend the IRA first as a general rule, simply because leaving IRAs to family members uh, when you die under the SECURE Act isn't always the most tax efficient way to go. That's number one, because they have to take it out over 10 years. And number two, uh, you know, it's certainly not protected from the cost of long-term care. So that would be good money to spend when you need, like, extra money to spend. But I would think if you're able to live off of your, your Social Security and pension checks and your required minimum distributions that end up into your, your personal checking and savings account, I'd, I'd, just, I'd just pay my bills right out of there. That would seem to make the most sense. So hopefully that was helpful, and, and certainly thanks for the call. Uh, And folks, you know, let me uh, tell you about our new guide since it's the beginning of the month and it is a new guide. It's estate planning potholes to avoid, right? It deals with things that you need to think about. Like don't sit back and say, I'm relying on my will. I have an estate plan. I'm done. I got a nominee realty trust. I'm in good shape. You know, no, those are all bad things to think about, right? Learn why they're bad and explain what you, these, this guide will explain why those are bad and what you can do to not to correct that problem. You know, I've done my estate plan 10 years ago. I'm all set. Maybe not. You should take a look at it. Don't think your estate's too small. I got, I got no reason to do this, right? No, you should read this and find out why uh, it too small is no reason not to plan and, and maybe even what is too small, right? So there's plenty of not only the potholes, but the reasons and how to fix the potholes. So if you've done your estate plan in the past, great for you. You can learn and check it and see if you need to upgrade. And if you haven't done your estate plan, really gives you some ideas to get started and how to avoid what you might be doing when you do your estate plan. Call and get the guide new for the month. Uh, Estate planning potholes to avoid, 866-848-5699 or legalexchangeshow.com. Again, 866-848-5699 or legalexchangeshow.com and learn how to avoid your estate planning potholes. Todd, I've got another one for you here. Let's go to Dave in Attleboro. Dave, you are on with Todd Lutsky. Good morning, Todd. Good morning. Uh, I have a situation where about 19 years ago, my parents sold me their primary residence, their house, for a dollar. Yeah. Um, we put it into a revocable family trust that we have some other properties in. Mm-hmm. Um, recently, my father, the last one, uh, passed away, and now we have possession of his house. And what I would like to know is we're going to sell our primary residence, which we've been in for 30 years, so we've got pretty good um Cost basis on that, mm-hmm. but should I establish his house as my primary residency for two years to avoid a, a big capital gains tax bill? So, which house are you selling? You made it sound like you were selling your primary residence. Are you selling the one that he gave you nineteen years ago? 
No, no, I'm selling my primary residence right now. Okay, so a couple of problems here that I that I see. So one, um, you you didn't just get possession of the house; you've had possession of the house since not, uh, t- 19 years ago when he gave it to you. Now, my only question that I might have is: Did he reserve the right to live there, or did he just give you the house outright? No, he reserved the right to live there. Ah, big difference, big difference. So thanks for that piece. So because he reserved the right to live there, again, I don't love this approach, but it did work out. It sounds like anyway, it worked out for you, Dave. So what happens here is, and you need to know this when you go to sell this property. I know we're talking about your primary residence, which I'll address in a minute. But if you go to sell this property, your father, because he kept the right to live there, says that he gave something away, but he reserved the right to enjoy what he gave away. So the government's going to include that in his estate for estate tax purposes, thereby getting a step up in basis. So if that property is worth 600000 on the date of dad's death, it's as if you paid $600,000. You can just sell it tomorrow and you have zero capital gains tax liability on that property because 600 minus 600 is zero. So no need to move in there and try to own it and use it as your primary residence for two years if you're going to be selling it sooner rather than later because of the increased basis you got all because of that reserved life estate versus having given it away outright. With regard to your house, Dave, yeah, you probably bought it a long time ago, probably have a very low basis and are looking at a large capital gain. However, if you're married and you've owned and used it as your primary residence, even though it's in a revocable trust for two of the last five years, you have got the ability to shelter $500,000 of that gain because it's your primary residence and that should help soften the estate ta- or the uh, capital gains tax blow. So hopefully that was helpful and hopefully we've addressed all the issues. Todd, I've got one more for you. We've got to be quick since we only have a couple minutes, but let's go to Mike in Westfield. Mike, what's your question for Todd Lutsky? Todd, very quick question. Our, uh, basically, we have a revocable trust that was set up about five years ago by Cushing and Dolder. Mm-hmm. And I want to know, Basically, at what point in time, basically, do we change or we basically move it to an irrevocable trust? My okay. wife is 65. She's retired. I'm 60. I'm 64. I'm 66. I'm still working. Mm-hmm. At what point in time? I'm going to tell you that's a great question. That's actually stuff that's in our guide, folks. So these are the kind of questions we are answering in the guide. So make sure you get it. But great question on your part is, hey, if I've done my planning 10, 15 years ago, I'm older now. This is the time to do it, right? To me, when you have done your planning a while ago and you're now older, you should revisit your situation, look at your net worth, see how much it is. I mean, obviously, if it's up over six, seven million, you don't need to bother. But if it's if it's down in the you know two, three million dollar range, you say, you know what? I'm older. I want to reduce mass estate tax, which I can do, but I also want to protect these assets from the cost of nursing home care in which I didn't care so much about before when I did it. So 65 is a rule of thumb. When clients come in and I've never met them, right? If they're 60, 65 and over, one of the questions I'm going to ask is, is protecting assets from the nursing home important? So that's the age I think about it. So for you, Mike, 65 and 64 is the perfect age to revisit your estate plan, determine whether or not protecting assets from the nursing home is even important to you. And if it is, then learn how to make that change and how those irrevocable trusts work. So you're right on schedule. I'd make the call. Mr. Lutsky, thank you so much for joining us today. We appreciate the time. Always a pleasure. Thanks for having me. This has been Ask Todd on the Financial Exchange Radio Network. Ask Todd with Todd Lutsky has been presented by Cushing and Dolan, serving Massachusetts and New England for more than 30 years, helping families with estate and tax planning, Medicaid planning, and probate law. Call 800-393-4001 or visit CushingDolan.com. The views expressed in this segment are solely those of Cushing and Dolan. Armstrong Advisory does not provide any legal or tax advice. Please consult with your legal or tax advisor on such matters. Cushing and Armstrong do not endorse each other and are not affiliated.